Exercise in the two to three plus hour range requires protein too. You know, anything in the two, three hour range or under, either one of these, carbs only, will work just fine. The application for both of these is identical. So either or, these are all complex carbohydrates. Anything over three hours, and I think, you know, if I were doing like a three and a half hour marathon, I'd probably still go carbs only. Um, just because running is a digestively challenging type of event and I want the fuel that's going to digest the quickest, which is carbs. But um, when you get into longer workouts, three, four, five, six hour stuff, at least as your primary fuel, say two thirds to three quarters of the time, you need a fuel that has carbs and protein in it. Um, Perpetuum has the same carb to protein ratio, real close. It's about seven or eight parts carbohydrate to one part protein. Perpetuum, we added a little bit of fat to it, a little bit of healthy fat. The idea being that the longer you go, the more your body is going to access its body fat stores, or more correctly, the calories from its body fat stores. When you give your body a little dose of fat, it says, thank you very much for not starving me of fat. I'll now let go of my fat stores more liberally so they can be used as an energy source more efficiently. We extrapolated that from the dieting craze from way back. Remember that? When, every, when, when the kick was cut out all the fat in your diet, and that's what everyone did. They cut out every gram of fat, and the body responded by saying, uh-uh, I'm holding on to what stores I've got. No fat coming in, no fat going out. So the longer you go and the more your body relies on the calories from its body fat stores, which again, the longer you go, two-thirds of your energy is going to come from the calories of stored body fat. So we have an almost endless supply of it. The other thing we added to Perpetuum is a, a nutrient called sodium tribasic phosphate, um, which is probably the best acid buffering pH neutralizing agent there is. It's wonderful. That, that burning sensation, sodium phosphate just knocks it right out. It's wonderful stuff. Whenever you get into three plus hours, at least part of the time, say, and, and ideally two-thirds to three-quarters of the time, you need carbs and protein. Why? If you don't provide it in your fuel mix, your body still has to satisfy somewhere between 5 and 15 percent of its energy from protein. You know, once you hit hour number two, oh, three and beyond, somewhere between 5 and 15 percent of your energy requirements are going to be fulfilled from protein. If you don't provide that in your fuel mix, your body will very gladly cannibalize or tear down your body, your, its own lean muscle tissue to make energy. Not a great idea. When your body literally digests its, its own muscle to make energy, number one, you can guarantee that your, your recovery after your workout is going to be a lot longer. Why? Because you've just broken down a lot more uh, uh, lean muscle tissue. Number two, when your body cannibalizes lean muscle tissue, it creates even more ammonia than it normally does. And I would argue that it is excess ammonia that is the primary cause of premature fatigue. You can't avoid ammonia production completely, just like you can't avoid lactic acid production. But you can minimize it, and one of the, one of the best ways is when you get into these longer workouts or races, um, use a carb plus protein fuel. Now, some companies make a four to one ratio of carbs to protein. There's a very popular product, been around forever. I got no problem with that for recovery. Our recovery drink is three to one carbs to protein. But again, remember, only about five to 15% of your energy is gonna be fulfilled from protein. So you need a lot more cal or, or a lot more carbs than you do protein. You do need some protein, but the ratio should be skewed much more in favor of carbs. That's why these fuels are about a seven or eight to one ratio of carbs to protein, which we think is a better ratio for use during exercise. Uh, we use soy protein in our during exercise fuels. We use whey protein isolate in our post exercise fuels. All things being equal, during exercise, soy protein is really high in certain amino acids that have antioxidant benefits, cardiovascular health benefits, pH buffering or pH neutralizing, acid buffering uh, benefits. You know, when you look at the amino acid profile of soy and whey protein together, 
soy is really high in certain amino acids that have benefits for during exercise so that's why we selected it for use during exercise so um, the other thing is most whey protein powders and believe me I do not believe there's anything better than whey protein for general health immunity muscle tissue repair recovery I mean, I'll go on record as saying that that's the best protein source there is but most if not all companies add an amino acid called glutamine to their whey protein products um, and, and I won't bore you with all the details, but glutamine is so beneficial you could write a book about it. Books have been written about it. It is more for recovery. See, glutamine has a little dark side to it. When you first ingest glutamine, it's not terribly stable. It produces a little ammonia when it's first metabolized. Now, during exercise, you're already producing ammonia. The last thing you want to do is exacerbate the problem. But that's what you do when you take glutamine supplements or glutamine enhanced whey protein during exercise. Now, kind of interestingly and paradoxically, about three hours after you ingest glutamine, it, it does produce ammonia initially, but about three hours down the road, it actually becomes a very effective ammonia scavenger. But during exercise you don't have that luxury of waiting for three hours for glutamine to soak up its own ammonia and, and a little extra so that's another reason why we recommend soy protein because of the glutamine after exercise when the muscles are done you know working that little issue of excess ammonia is really a non-issue